Cut loud, no hey, hey. Don't waste We're, we're neck and neck. <laughs> Vocational guidance counselor. Oh. Vocational oh. guidance counselor. Oh. Oh. Richard, you lead this review? Sorry. Huh? You lead this review? Yep. <laughs> Alright. And everybody hold. Now hold on, let the sirens go away. No, they have texture. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they do. That's not wrong. Wow. High art movies about political assassinations never come with uh, merchandising, do they, Bug? Oh, well, hey! Wait. That's why I'm introducing this new dog girl. <laughs> remember, remember the 22nd of November. Uh, <laughs> we'll now be shooting Richard in the back of the head in effigy. Back into the left, as always. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Richard. I'm Bo. I'm Frank. JC. Chris. And we are reviewing Jackie, which is uh, Natalie Portman's, you know, Pretty much next guaranteed Oscar, I'm thinking. Yeah, it's Black Swan 2, oh. except with more assassination. This but. is uh, the Jackie Kennedy biopic, um, which really concentrates on the four days uh, beginning with uh, Jack Kennedy's assassination. Uh, although it kind of does pull a little bit of trick because actually there are uh, moments from 1967 when Jack was reinterred with uh, the two children they lost. Yes. So mm. they, you know, so if you're not if you don't know that bit of the history, then you you don't know this actually takes takes place across basically four years. That, that was a little years. bit of a surprise to me because I was wondering what was going on, and then I sort of it's kind of strange because it yeah. 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 the framing yeah. device they use is the the very famous uh, Life magazine uh, article or, or uh, interview uh, that she did. You know, it was one of the, the first times she kind of spoke publicly about uh, you know the aftermath, uh, which <laughs> the, the the conceit of this film is that it happens in in uh, you know w- winter of of sixty three, and boy, that's not winter in Massachusetts <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination in this film. Well, I that's the thing. I mean, if you know the chronology of when everything happened, then this is actually over a long period of time. But you don't sure. need to because this is this is a portrait of grief, yeah, and yeah, the fact absolutely. that her grief never goes away. And if you know it's across four years, then it adds a, a real bitter poignancy to it Mm. but what this really is is a a master class um uh by portman i mean first of all she gets jackie kennedy down in ways that i've never really seen a performance quite get and nobody's really tried to there was a a, god there was a mini series in the uh in the 80s which actually really more concentrated on her when she was jackie and she was jackie and Um, and, and getting past this is you know this is a a woman who is realizing that she now has a place in history she thought she had one uh, and they do refer constantly to the the camelot legacy mm-hmm. uh, but this is really about her realizing which is really is not the same i mean and i was surprised a lot of the 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 myth of the, the camelot legacy comes from uh the the interview that she does that is used as the framing device because yeah. she that was where she said like that was jack's jack would listen to to that song like all the time uh and you know that's that's what i want people to come away with the idea of our administration, because there, there will there will be better, or there there will be there will be great presidents again, but you'll you'll never have this moment again. And and it's absolutely true. You know, obviously the Kennedy assassination is one of the major turning points and the, the loss of American innocence. Uh, but yeah, um, certainly the Kennedy assassination has has had several films made about it, but this is is absolutely one of the most personal because it is ex- exploring jackie and, and you don't only get the uh <clears throat> the, the sense of this traumatic national event but this traumatic personal event that deals with with you know her losing uh her her husband who she you know admittedly had a tumultuous relationship with uh as well as losing the the father of her children yeah um and she she actually uh she, she her being being a newspaper woman herself, being a journalist herself, she said she'd do the the interview, but she had complete control over what was in it, and so she more or less edited her own interview. Uh, so in this movie, you you see her saying some stuff that you know was off the record. <laughs> Which uh, I, I thought those ha- those sequences were handled extremely well because they, I think so too. these yeah. also reflect you know the, uh, how they handled 
uh, death of a president. Sure. Uh, because when the book Portrait of a President was written, they were really mad that they didn't have a degree of control. And for the access for the author to be given, they really had to have a, a sense that they trusted what they were going to do. And there's yeah. this beautiful dance that goes on in those sequences between her and, and the journalist where she's recounting. And there are moments where she's going, you want to know what it really was? Mm. Well, here's what it is. But you can't talk about what those things are. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it, he does say, you know, there's moments where he's like, you know, what, you know, she says, well, what the question do you want to ask? And he said, what did it feel like to have, you know, have his brain in your lap? You know, it's yeah. like, which is what you want to know. Because not only moments like now. that, but the way in which this is a unique movie about grief, like you said, is I don't think anyone throughout the entire 60 years since it happened ever thought about the days after what she, what specifically she went through as far as, oh, hey, you're not the first lady anymore. you got to move all your shit out of the house. Oh, and hey, by the way, can you help us plan this funeral? And like, Actually, I mean, that, really that is some of the stuff that's very specifically yeah. dealt with uh, in, in Death of the President of the Time and, yeah. and, and these okay. whole issues because nobody had ever had to deal with that really yeah. in that way since since Lincoln. And, uh, and, and not yeah. only that, but you, you get the, the Johnson, uh, you know, the, the, the Johnson... What ended up being the Johnson administration was very much its own camp inside the the, the Kennedy administration, mm -hmm. and so when when John died, when when John was was assassinated, all of a sudden you you get uh, you you get Johnson moving right in and replacing uh, Bobby as Attorney General, uh, replacing several other points uh, uh, appointments. Uh, he kept uh, uh, Robert McNamara as uh, uh, Secretary. So good good call there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, certainly a middle part of this is the uh, is the transitory period, and the fact that you know Jack is he's he's literally he's lying in wait uh, in the White House uh, for the more private ceremony, and then he is taken to the uh, the Capitol building, um, and basically Jackie plans this pomp and circumstance funeral that has never been seen since since the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and has yet to be uh, seen again. Let's hope. Or yeah. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone say. forgets about Walter McKinley. You know? Oh, uh, Come exactly. on. Yeah. Yeah. Walter Poor McKinley and, and John Garfield, uh, there, there's a great there's a great bit in this where, where yeah, she's she was, yeah. talking to, to them, people yeah. and she's like, do you know who William McKinley is? And like, oh, no. Do you know who John Garfield is? No. Do you know who Abraham Lincoln is? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so she's like, okay, well, there's our there's our nominee for, for funeral arrangements. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, the, the those core sequences where she's talking to the journalist. Uh, Billy Crudup, who is now unrecognizable uh, as uh, Theodore White. I did not recognize him in the slightest. I, I was like, got to the end of the credits and was like, Billy Crudup's in this? He's really? one of those guys who's he's, 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 he's been very much kind of below the radar and now he, he's popped back up this he's year. He's fantastic in this. in this, by the way. I think he's the he's, only actor that can actually hold I, her. I, I did, think he, in yeah. this and uh, uh, 20th Century Women, he, he does an yes. amazing job, so it's no, nice I, to see I, him I gotta say, Peter Sarsgaard as Bobby, oh, I think it's he's spectacular. Nails it. The, yeah. the guy he, who the guy who plays Jack it does does a great job yeah, too, but obviously not in a lot of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whereas uh, uh, Bobby's one of the few people who can kind of get through Jackie's guard and really mm -hmm. speak personally to her. Uh, and Sarsgaard, as usual, being the master craftsman he is, nails it. And a great cameo by Greta Gerwig as yep. uh, Nancy Tuckerman, who was basically. Uh, Jackie's confidant and, and consigliere within the administration, and her only real friend who could, who remembered her from before the point where she was the first lady. They were both debutantes together, yeah. and indeed, she ended up working for her for the for the rest of her life. Yeah, yeah. It, it testament does, to how good she is because such a small role, but yeah, she's every bit just nails it throughout. And I think one of the th remarkable things that this manages is to catch the spirit of innocence of the opening days of the Kennedy administration because you can't think about it now without thinking about. This is, you know, how it ended. Mm -hmm. But you actually look at what was written during the time, and yes, it was controversial, and yes, everybody concentrates on, you know, the Cuban Missile Crisis and things like that. But Jack Kennedy was the first president who went to his inauguration in the 20th century not wearing a top hat. Yeah. This was a change, and it catches that sense of innocence and something is changing. He, he, but killed, a he killed the fedora for a long time, yeah. and we can only thank him for that. But there's this reverence for the for the office, but saying it has to enter the new phase, and that's reflected in the whole subplot about uh, and the TV uh, when they did the TV tour the of, the hat, of the White House, yeah. Yeah. which, which yeah, yeah, but before the Kennedy administration, like basically, if you were president, you could take whatever you want from the White House with you, and 
So a lot of these kind of archival items that are there now that are preserved in like the the Lincoln bedroom and mm-hmm. uh, the Rose room, what have you, uh, were not there. And Jackie Kennedy went and she she found these. She she tracked them down uh, and you know redesigned the the White House to be the People's House and did that you know obviously you know seminal uh, uh, inter- TV interview, which is one of the first times that the American public had been invited in. It was mm. you know like going into Buckingham Palace, which uh, <laughs> they they did at some point uh, uh, with with Queen Liz. Much second, later. yes, much much much, much, much later. later. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, early adopters. We yeah, uh, but uh, you know that they they do pay very attention, very much attention to the fact that that you know Jack and Jackie were our, our you know, American royalty for mm-hmm. a bit, uh, and they, they, you know, re-imbued the office with this kind of high state mm-hmm. and majesty, uh, and enthusiasm, and, enthusiasm yeah. and, you know, you, you could see in the transition that, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, we, we, we didn't, uh, we didn't get to, to, to finish this, uh, which is very, and there's, there's a great scene, uh, uh, Richard E. Grant, does a great job uh, playing uh, William Walton, I believe, who was uh, the the interior decorator that Jackie worked with for the uh, the redesign. And uh, there's this scene as, as she's leaving, and he's sitting with Lady Bird Johnson, and she's discussing you know what she wants to do wallpaper wise, and he just kind of looks at her, and there's this very tragic, lovely moment of uh, denouement. Final thoughts, Herman. Um, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of this movie. What? Uh, in all honesty. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I, I have just kind of problems in general with biopics. Like, it's usually just to serve a single performance in, in the film itself. And everything else is just kind of window dressing. And even if, like, you have, you know, other performances in the film, I always feel like they're just not given enough to do. And that, that was kind of the case of Jackie. Um, you know, Peter Skarsgård as, as Bobby Kennedy, I thought he was did a pretty piss poor job honestly Thank you. Yes, yeah. I agree with you I, th- I, th- th- I agree with you, you know, right. yeah. the, thing, the other thing is you know okay so he doesn't look like Bobby Kenny I can let that go mm-hmm. but he just doesn't nail the voice whatsoever and there was actually a point in the film like is this Bobby Kennedy <laughs> and and, and I'm, after a while I'm like oh it is Bobby and you don't even realize that the, the, yeah. the, the film just makes the assumption like oh you already know it's Bobby Kennedy because Peter Scar- yeah, Scar- yeah, Scar- yeah. Scar- so you wanted him to be more like I came into the White House without wearing pants and uh, I'll leave <laughs> without I, wearing pants I expect no I expected him to try and yeah, there you, go. Um, exactly. you know, wow. it, not and, just do not just do Peter Scar- Scar- yeah, yeah exactly you know, okay. with, with, a, with, a, with a hint hint of a Boston accent, which would he would drop for, throughout most of the film. Um, <laughs> in there a little bit. Yeah, and the one thing I will agree with you, I think that it's great that the, the framing device of the film where it's structured around this uh, interview with, uh, uh, I think, with Billy or Crudup's character. I think that's great. But then there's also, like, an additional framing device with John Hurt, who is still alive, by the way. I, you know, he's, he looks, he's, I guess he's a lich or something. But, um, he and it's like... all the time. Yeah. yeah. But, he's not super old, I don't think. He, well, he looks it. Um, <laughs> but the the thing yes that, in Britain they actually let their actors age yeah. not like here he'll, he'll no. probably survive 2016 no, hopefully yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah, that's vast amounts of I certainly I certainly don't want them to die but it's just like man I can't believe it that's what uh, Jit will do to you but the thing is is that why is that she, basically she has this whole other uh, other conversation with this priest I mean John Hurt plays the priest in the film it's like why is this necessary for her just to have to go like oh why is God so cruel it's like come on we've we've had this kind of uh, back and forth and other types of movies before we don't need another framing device it's just not necessary it's just kind of pointless you can cut that and cut all those scenes out of the movie and it, it you know it, it, just well, there's, there's just no point do you to think it would have worked you know had it not been used as a framing device yeah, like, I just like, that's its own sort of like standalone. Sequence you could. Or... I, the thing is, is that you could have had either or. It's like you you can cut out either the stuff with Billy Crudup or or and keep the John Hurt stuff. Or it's like you don't need two. And for for me, that just didn't work. Uh, where I did feel like this film shine is when Natalie Portman, of course, is on screen, which is the majority of the film. I think she nails the voice. Mm-hmm. I think that she just kind of she, not so much even the voice, but the way just the the the, the, the enunciations, the, the mannerisms, and everything. Uh, this movie also uses like a lot of archive footage, and though you know Natalie Portman doesn't uh, look like uh, you know uh, uh, Jackie Kennedy, she still kind of nails the the mannerisms to a certain extent, and just like the presentation. Whereas like other people, like Skarsgård, it's just like yeah, I'm just I'm just filling in here. I'm, I'm not really sure why. Or even I forget the other guy who plays uh, LBJ. Uh, but he basically says oh, two John lines Carl the entire Lynch. film. Yeah. 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 And like the, the best scene I thought that him and uh, Skarsgård had is when they kind of hint at the obvious tensions between 
uh, the two, which I, I, I like. I mean, I love the, the whole, like, dynamic between Bobby Kennedy and, and LBJ, and I would have liked to see no, more of that. Nobody's going to give it up for Matt Casella is finally be, getting a great casting as Jack Flinney after years of being in the, the Doogie Howser stereotype. <laughs> oh, that's right, no. yeah. No, the are not. <laughs> been, uh, biting time. Uh, I thought he was good. He, I was happy to see that, too, because he had that, he that bit part in The Sopranos, where I was like, oh, hey, he's not, the, he's not Doogie Howser's friend anymore. He actually works quite regularly. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, right. but, rating, yeah, but rating. yeah, just yeah, to get my rating. And I thought uh, some of the pacing was off because of the inclusion of these kind of the, the extra framing device. So for me, I probably give this uh, six and a half. Um, uh, I don't know, brain matter scalps. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, left, right. Somebody was, yeah. and, that's, and that's the one thing. Saw that coming. And that's the one thing I'd say. Anyway, that's the one thing I'd say is that it's <laughs> you didn't need to uh, show the assassination. I think I would have been even happier had they not. But it was like the whole film was leading up to that point, and it's like it's not necessary. So, yeah, I, I might be kind of so because you guys clearly liked it, and he didn't like it as much. So I'm probably going to be somewhere in the middle. Um, fantastic trailer, and so this kind of be, might be in a situation in which I was fooled a little bit by the trailer because it's so good. Uh, fun fact: I first watched the trailer and I was like, "Oh, this seems like Darren Ar- Aronofsky directed it, and he actually produced it," because it sort of had that that feel uh, to me. Um, really he came grateful on board to... after the fact, though. What's up? He came on board as producer after filming. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. Um, really grateful for the fact that this is an hour and forty minutes. I think it proved that in, in every award season movie doesn't have to be a two and a half long hour long epic. Mm-hmm. Just for the sake of being a two and a half hour long epic, yeah. Natalie performance, Natalie Portman's performance was great. Um, I like I'm I, I like the welcoming trend lately of biopics, not necessarily focusing on the entire life because I feel like yes. biopics all follow the same formula of like I'm nothing, I'm nobody, I'm famous, I fuck up. Then a horrible sawmill accident occurs, <laughs> yeah. and I become a musician. Yeah, uh, I fuck up. Everybody hates me. Everybody loves me again. I'm famous and I'm dead. Uh, so let's go, game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like Steve Jobs did that, focused on a few elements of Steve Jobs' life. So this one, focusing on just this terrible aspect of Jackie Onassis, of Jackie Kennedy's life, um, was really interesting and I think made it for a better film. Um, yeah, but overall, I was slightly disappointed. I expected a little bit more out of it. Um, but yeah, the performance is great. And she, if she wins the Oscar, I'm not going to dispute it. She definitely deserved it. Um,. I would say six and a half also, even though I liked it a lot more than you did. Uh, six and a half out of ten pieces of Lincoln furniture. <laughs> well, uh, you know, ever this is probably going to be the most watched performance of the year, certainly the most you know watched female performance, and it's a hard role to nail down. So many actresses have tried. I mean, everyone from like Jacqueline Smith tried it. Katie Holmes is actually on filming her second attempt at it. Um, But I think that Natalie Portman probably did it best because she just, you know, beyond just being down with the voice and the mannerisms, she got uh, the character's vulnerability and her strength. And I think that's also where, you know, the movie strength is because it doesn't try, as you pointed out, it doesn't try, like, to chronicle, well, this is the date that she did this and this is the time she did this. And I remember hearing an interview with randomly with Roma Downey years ago when she played Jacqueline Kennedy and she said that when she received the script it was like a telephone book because it tried to cr- cram so much you know event wise into whatever the however long the production was but I love that this one just focused on her and her essence and her sensibility and um and it nails it and you know it does right by her uh I do agree that the the framing device it, it is one framing device too many um, had they just stuck, you know, with the one, which I love, by the way, I think that it's, you know, the scenes with Natalie Portman and Billy Crudup, um, are fantastic. In fact, I think he is the only one that stands out of the supporting cast because she is so good that everyone gets lost. Richard E. Grant gets lost, Greg Gerwig, Peter Sarsgaard, you know, they do fine work, but it's only crew that really stands out, um, because, you know, it's a movie about Jackie. You know, and she is still to this day such an alluring and enticing figure, and she always will be. And um, yeah, there are problems. I didn't like the score. I thought the score belonged like in a Dario Argento, Dario Argento film. But overall, it's a solid film, and um, I say I'd have to give it probably seven framing devices out of ten. <laughs> Bo, 
Well, I'm going to have to disagree with the, the, the math so far. <laughs> this and, might so, be happening on this yeah, side of the, uh, yeah. the couch, and, that's what we're saying. And, and the, the major thing that, the, that I would say is that I, I, I think there, there's this conceit that we, we have as, as moviegoers, as playgoers, what have you, that everything now has to be an ensemble piece, and I don't agree with that. I think sometimes that star turns are necessary, and that sometimes a, you know a tour de force like this can be very explicatory. I do not. I couldn't disagree more that that the people got lost in the background here. I thought there were great performances. Uh, granted, not a lot of screen time, but that doesn't necessarily equate a great performance. I think Richard E. Grant did an incredible job here. I thought Peter Sarsgaard did a very good job. Uh, I, I guess he wasn't dropping enough R's for you guys, but hey. <laughs> uh, Greta Gerwig, certainly. Uh, uh, Never uh, said sh- chowder. <laughs> Gre- Greta, Ger- Ger- Greta Gerwig, uh, cer- certainly shown in this, and... You know, they, they did their job, which was to uh, elevate the experience uh, of, 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 of Jacqueline and let us see what was going on through her eyes and, you know, really not steal the spotlight from, from Portman. She, of course, uh, comports herself. Uh, it, uh, uh, very, I did not endorse this <laughs> uh, Quite well uh, in this. Uh, I am not a big fan of biopics, as a matter of fact. Uh, I... I think they can get very hidebound. Uh, I, I think they can, you know, a lot of people who write biopics, they, they find these little moments in a person's life and just want to harp on, on them. Uh, and I don't think this does this. I think this gives you a very, uh, you know, I Richard said, uh, dance-like. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think that's a good uh, metaphor for the way it it goes through and, and utilizes its timeline to express what Jackie was going through at this point, uh, and much more importantly, what it meant to us as a country, uh, uh, both politically and emotionally. Uh, so, that being said, uh, once again, it, it, it is a biopic, and that always hems you in a little, so I'm deducting a little bit for that. Uh, <laughs> and I will give the, uh, I give this uh, 8.5 jelly donuts <laughs> out of 10. Um, I think this is an extraordinary film. Uh, and I have to disagree with the idea that these are framing mechanisms. They aren't. No. This, what it does you can't is, it, Catholicism. is it, it swirls these elements together and it moves between these events so smoothly and creates these echoes and ripples that I think add power to each other. And the interview it resonates with the more honest confessional with, uh, with the priest. And they resonate with the moments after Jack's death. And they resonate with her trying to organize uh, the, uh, the funeral. Because what it, it's about is about somebody in an extraordinary situation trying to create a legacy. And the reason why you have to do a biopic like this is because I think it's not understood what Jackie was trying to do. Mm. And I think this film gets that across. Mm. She was trying to build a legacy. And there are moments where she is cruel and manipulative because that's what she has to be. She has to be that for the country, and she has to be that for the legacy of her children, and for the legacy of her husband. Gr- growing up as a kid, my mom like worshipped Jackie. I didn't really understood why, and yeah. this oh, made me yeah. understand yeah. it a little bit better. And, and you know, she she sets something in motion, and it re- this really reinforces that without her, the Kennedy legacy would have probably either been completely different or maybe vaporized. Uh, I think that I, I, the score is remarkable and adds to that. You know, otherworldly feel because this is a moment where everything has fallen apart and she is trying to pull the world together by force of will and at the same time she is falling apart and I think that's, that contradiction is so powerful here and so pitiful and I think that's really what Portman captures that those moments where she is clearly falling apart and even in those, those moments uh, with Nancy where the one person that she can confide in even then, she can't really let everything go. There's mm-hmm. only those moments where she is in total personal collapse, and she is holding it together for the country and what she wants the country to be, and what she wants she hopes it will hold together as. And that's a remarkable achievement from the script, from the director, but particularly from Portman. This is a, a, an extraordinary performance. That I, you know, if she doesn't win the Oscar, I'm not sure who's going to beat her this year. I really don't see anything coming because this this is heartbreaking. This is, it's been a weird year because this is only a year of films about grief, which is really timely yes, by complete yeah. accident. But this stands with Manchester by the Sea uh, as a great examination of how you deal with grief. That it is not something you get over. It's not a cold. It's not a sprained ankle. 
it is it is part of you and she absorbs that so well and pulls that together that this is about functioning through extraordinary grief and not necessarily a grief that anybody else is ever going to be asso- to able to associate with mm-hmm. and that's why this biopic is relevant and important uh i this is a a, a solid nine out of ten uh pink pillbox hats i was gonna go with that actually i yeah. you know yeah. i i if nothing else make sure you say after the credits where they set up jackie to the onassis scene yeah. <laughs> for the record <laughs> i'm no, with no. richard <laughs> <laughs> you're with him You've listened to one of us.net for years. Quality shows that have made you laugh and maybe even cry. But did you know they produce podcasts that you may not have even heard of? For just a few dollars a month, you have the opportunity to hear quality podcasts like The Breakfast Pub, Plagane Bowl 2016, Get Hype Motherfuckers. The Original Gentleman. I see this as an avenue to you becoming a huge chick magnet. Oh, yeah. And the Watch a Movie With Us series. By the way, anybody thinking that his makeup is a little bit heavy here does not remember the 80s. (laughs) Oh, she's thinking about banking babies right now. Oh, it turned into a phallic symbol. Become a subscriber to oneofus.net and choose your level of giving from... Red Shirt. Brown Coat. Time Lord and Jedi and know that your donation will help bring quality oral entertainment to you for years to come thank you and may Cthulhu devour your house last <laughs>